Hello and welcome to this end-to-end -end project on how we can implement incremental data loading from Microsoft Fabric Leak House to Microsoft Fabric Warehouse. If you're new to this channel and you are yet to subscribe, please click on the subscribe button and toggle on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. So let's go through the project. The first thing we're going to do is to create a lake house in this lake house to warehouse incremental data loading workspace. And I'm going to ingest some CSV file into the file menu of the lake house. And then I'm going to create a warehouse, which is going to be the destination. And I'm going to write some SQL code to create tables, to create watermark and so many other stuff, because we're going to be using a watermarking technique to achieve this. And they're going to create a data flow to transform the data from the file menu in the lake house and then ingest manually into the table in the warehouse. And they're going to truncate the data and they come back to the data pipeline to implement the full incremental data loading. So let's get started. I'm going to click on this new item and then I'm going to set for lake house. And I'm going to call this one sales data lake house and then click on create the lake house has now been provisioned i'm going to click on this ellipsis for the files and then i want to upload the files i'm going to click on this and browse to the location and i'm going to click on the sales 2015 to 2020 or to 2017 so we are ingesting temporarily the sale 2015 to 2017. I'm going to click on upload and we have the data uploaded. I'm going to cancel this and close this. And I can click on this refresh and I can double click and I can see the three files. Let's investigate the content of the sales 2015 to 2017. Click on that and then we can see the preview. I'm going to click on these files and then click on the 2016 and then we can see the content and then let's see the content of the 2017. That's fine. So I'm going to come here and duplicate this tab because we want to maintain focus on this leak house. So I'm going to come here and then I can go back to the workspace. Now we want to create a warehouse in the workspace. I'm going to click on this new item and set for warehouse. I'm going to call this one sales data warehouse. Okay, so the warehouse has now been provisioned. So we're going to create a new SQL query. And then I'm going to paste some code and walk you through the code. So first, we're going to create a table named Lake House Sales Data. And we're going to have these columns, the order date, year, month, region, subcategory, product, and sales. And we can see the order date is containing a date data type. The year is containing integer, and then we have the month to the product containing the var car with different length. And then the cells contain the decimal data type. So I'm going to go ahead and create this and run the code. Now, this columns is similar to what we have in the source data, the order date, year, month, to the sales column. Now, having created that table, let's just go ahead and see whether we have any data in the newly created table. So we can run this select star from Lake House sales date table we just created. We can see we have no data in this table. That's fine. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And now we want to create a table named lake house underscore watermark table now i'm going to use the watermark method to achieve this incremental data loading and in this table we're going to have two columns the first is going to be the table name with the variable character of 255 length and then we have the watermark value with date data type i'm going to go ahead and create this table and that's been created now we can just investigate by querying the table we just created so you can see we have the table name and the watermark with no content. Now I'm going to scroll down and then we want to insert this lake house sales data table we created first. And I'm going to insert this date, 1753, 1st of January, into the table name and the watermark value column respectively. I'm going to select this and click on run. 
So we can see we have two contents in that table. Now we can investigate by running a select star from lake house watermark table and then we can run the code so we're going to see the two records inserted into that table so we can say we have the lake house sales data and then we have the watermark value which is this date value now we're going to create a start procedure that we're going to use to update our record and that's going to give us the perfect job without having to reload data that has been loaded initially so we're going to create this top procedure named my watermark update and then we're going to have two parameters we're going to have the last modified date with date data type and table name with var count data type and then we're going to use the as begin so we're going to check if the parameterized last modified date is greater than this date begin then we're going to update the lake house watermark table and then we're going to set the watermark value column equal to the parameterized last modified date which is coming from our stored procedure and then we're going to use the where clause where the table name is equal to the parameterized table name coming from our stored procedure so let's go ahead and run this create stored procedure okay so the procedure has been registered now that's beautiful i'm going to come here and duplicate this tab now it would have been so awesome if we can just go ahead and create our data pipeline but because our source data contains CSV file, if you try to initiate by using the data pipeline by moving the data from the lake house to the warehouse, you're going to be getting quite some errors. So this is going to lead us to using the data flow to connect to the lake house data. And then we're going to transform by changing the data type in data flow gen 2 and then load into the destination table in this warehouse. So I'm going to quickly come here. And then I'm going to come to the workspace and then create a new item. And I'm going to set for data flow gen 2. Okay, so this has been provisioned. I'm going to click on this to rename. I'm going to call this on data flow for data loading incremental. You can use whatever you like. And press enter. Now, we can click on this get data. And I want to go to the more option at the bottom. Now, we're going to have this new one leg catalog so we can pick data within our catalog. So now we want to pick the data coming from the lake house. So we can see the type as lake house. So I'm going to click on the sales data lake house and I'm going to say connecting to the sales data lake house at the bottom right. And then we can see the name of the lake house. Now I'm going to click on this to expand. And we're going to see the sales 2015 to 2017 that we ingested here. All right. Now, because we want to logically append all of them, now I'm going to click back on this to collapse and then make sure the file is selected. And we're going to click on the bottom right, create. And this is going to ingest all the data from that file of the lake house. And then we can go on and logically append them. So I can see the content. I can see name, extension, and so on and so forth. Now, we only want to focus on this content. So I'm going to right-click and then remove other columns. Now, when you click on this, we can see we have this one leg dot dbfs dot fabric dot microsoft dot com. Now, we want to see how we can combine all of this data now we can combine with this method so i'm going to come to the add column tab and then i want to add a custom column now i'm just going to refer back to this content just double click on it and that's all i need to do click ok now this is going to be transformed into a binary so i can use any of them let me just get rid of this delete now, I can see this double arrow, which allows me to combine all the files in the binary. So I can click on that. And this is going to start combining all the files and generate some extra. So we can see this intermediate step, which give us the sample of the first file. So we can see the columns, which is looking good. We can see the file origin, the delimiter as a comma, and the data type detection based on the first 200 rows. So click on OK. Now we have the data combined as a flat table. So I can click on this to check it out. So you can see the 2015 to 2017, which is cool. Now I'm going to cancel that. Now it is important I modify this default data type. Now this is actually using the old number, but 
in the table we created, the sales column is using the decimal data type. So I'm going to come here and change this to the decimal data type. Otherwise, it's going to be an error. So make sure the data types correspond across the data flow and the warehouse. So this has been transformed. Now we can just go ahead and load to the destination. So I'm going to come to the home tab and then click on add data destination or I can even come here and add this data destination. Anyone is fine. So I'm going to choose the warehouse we created and then this is automatically connected because I'm using the entry ID. So click on next. And we can see the name of the warehouse, sales data warehouse. Now we have an existing table. So I'm going to click on this and then I can click on this to expand and I can pick one of the two tables. Now I'm going to load the data into the lake house sales data table. Now for now, we have no rows to visualize. So we can see this correspond the decimal data type. I'm going to click on next. And then we have to choose destination settings. Now in the settings, we're going to specify the update mode. Now we're going to stick with this default replace. And then we can see the column mapping. So we can see the list of the source columns and the destination columns. And then we have the data type for the destination, not the source now, for the destination. So I can just click on save settings. Okay, so we have provisioned the data to be published into the warehouse table. Now I can see this has been grilled out, which is fine. I'm going to click on publish now. I'm going to click on the data flow ellipsis to check the status and click on refresh history. So this succeeded. Now let's go and verify in the warehouse. I'm going to come here and then I can query the lake house sales data. So let's go ahead and run this query. So this return all the record. Now let's count how many record we have. We should have 60 record because we have 20 rows in each of these CSV files. So it should give us 60. So I'm going to use the count aggregate function and count the number of rows in that table. So let's go ahead and run the code. So this return 60, which is absolutely fantastic. Now we are able to ingest the data from the data flow into this warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead and truncate the record in that data in that table. So run the code. And I'm going to run this again. Now I'm going to see zero record as the count. Now this is beautiful. We want to go ahead and create our data pipeline to orchestrate the data movement and implement some of the incremental data loading techniques. So I'm going to right click to maintain this and then click on duplicate. I'm going to click on this item again and set for data pipeline. I'm going to call this one incremental data pipeline and I can go ahead and click on create. So the pipeline has been provisioned. Now I'm going to come to activities and first I need to look up activity. This is going to be used to detect the old and new watermark value. So I'm going to just add one more and I'm going to move this aside here. So let's start by giving them a mini phone. I'm going to call this one old watermark lookup. And I'm going to come to the settings. So I'm going to choose the connection. So this is going to be pointing to the sales data warehouse. And I'm going to write query, not a table. And I'm going to use the dynamic content. Now in the dynamic content, I'm going to write some code. So first, I want to write select. And I'm going to use a function called the max function to return the most recent data from the watermark value column. So max function, and I'm going to call the name of the column in here. So let me just move that so that I can understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick this watermark value come to C and I'm going to paste within this. And it is important to give this an alias. So I'm going to call this on old watermark value and I'm going to select this from the lake house watermark table. So I'm going to copy this and return and paste. So that's all I need to do for this. I can click on OK. Now let's test by checking the value. Now this is going to give us the 
date that we inserted this um, 1753 1st of January. Okay, so you can see we have 1st of January 1753 and then we can see the old watermark value as the name of the column. Now, it is important to check first row only because we're going to refer this later on. So, this is the setup for the old watermark. Now, I'm going to quickly just copy the name and come to this second lookup and I'm going to paste and make changes to the name. So, I'm going to call this one new watermark value and then I want to go to the settings. In the settings, again, I'm going to choose the connection which is going to be the sales data way outs. And again, we want to write a query and we want to use a dynamic content. So again, we want to perform select and I'm going to use the max function again. I want to get the max. Now I'm going to get the max of the other date column because when you come back to the yeah this environment, so we can see we're going to be using the other date column to check the data that has been loaded and the data that is yet to be loaded. So I'm going to come back here and type in the order dates column and we're going to provide an alias. I'm going to call this one as, let's just call this one new watermark value. And I'm going to call this one from this table, which is the lake house sales data table. So I'm going to just press contribute to paste. This is not going to work fully because as soon as the data, the first batch of data is loaded into the target table in the warehouse, this is going to return a null later on. So I'm going to use a function called the colis to undo the null. So I'm going to type the function name here, colis, and open the brackets. And I'm going to just store and evaluate in there. I'm going to store the same date that we used earlier on. So inside the single quote, I'm going to type in 17, 53 and I'm going to type in 1st of January. Okay, so if this max function returns loss, then hey, just give me this code list. So I'm going to type this one correct. So this is how to type the function name. Okay, code list. I'm going to click OK. So again, I can click on this preview data and it's going to return the same 1753 1st of January temporarily. Okay, there's an error. Let me check what could be the error. So let me see. Ah, okay. I'm missing a closing parenthesis here. So close that and click on preview data. Now, this is why it is really important to preview your data to know where the error is coming from. So it's going to give us the same, okay, 1753. Okay, let me just make changes. It should be 1753 just to be consistent across the board. Okay, so I'm going to click, okay. So we have the new watermark and the old watermark setup. So I'm going to create the data flow. Now, don't forget the data flow is where we have the transformation by connecting to the link out. So I'm going to move this one here and I can give this a meaningful name, transformation of data. And I'm going to choose the settings tab and this is going to detect the name of the workspace and I'm going to choose the specific data flow. So I'm going to choose the data flow for data loading incremental. So I'm going to move this aside a little bit. I'm going to move this aside and then we want to create a copy data activity. So add to canvas. And I'm going to move this here a little bit. So let me just move this. And then we're going to connect on success data flow to the copy data activity. And then again, for the lookups, I'm going to connect them across the two of them. Okay, this has been connected. Now we can move to configuring the copy data activity. I'm going to call this one copy data. You can choose whatever you like. And I'm going to come to source. So in the source, again, I'm going to choose the sales data warehouse. And then we want to write a query and we want to add a dynamic content. So now I want to select all the rows that's going to be passed by this data flow. So I'm going to write select and press enter star and from. And I want to select that from our table, link our sales data table and I'm going to paste. So I'm going to use the where clause. I'm going to say, hey, where the order date column is greater than now i'm going to use the add symbol and i want to call first the old watermark and so we have the activity and the old watermark and i'm going to use the period and i'm going to get the output of the first row so i'm going to press tab on this and put it come and i'm going to pass in the alias that we defined so i think that should be old 
um, old watermark value. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm going to check this out later. So this must be surrounded, this part must be surrounded inside a curly bracket. So I'm going to control V to paste what I just caught. So again, everything must be surrounded inside a single quote. So I just caught that control X and control V to paste. So this is how we can configure this part, which is really important. And let's just move this down a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to use the AND. So I'm going to use AND where the other date column is less than or equal to the new watermark. So I'm going to call the new watermark, or let me just put an add symbol and I'm going to call the new watermark. Again, period, I want to get the output of the first row and dot, and I want to use, let me just copy this and make changes. So control V to paste, and this is going to be new watermark value alias we provided in the lookup activity so again i will cut this side control x to cut open a square bracket control v again select the whole thing with the add symbol control x to cut inside a single quote control v to paste so this is the code now this is very logical but that's what it is so we are selecting all the rows from this table where the other date is greater than the 1753 4th of January, and where the other date is less than equal to the last loaded point, the date that we loaded into the table, which is going to load anyway in a moment. So I'm going to click OK. So we have the configuration for the source now for the destination. This is straightforward. I'm going to choose the connection and it's going to be the sales data warehouse. And then I'm going to use the existing uh, table. Now, don't forget, we have the lake house sales data table we've created. So I can click on this to select that lake house sales data table. And then we can move to configuring the stored procedure. So I'm going to come here and look for the stored procedure. So I'm going to just drag this across and I'm going to give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this on uh, updates watermark. SP and then I can come to the settings. Now in the settings, we have two things to do. We're going to provide a connection. So I want to pick that from the sales data warehouse. And then we want to choose the stored procedure name. So what's going to be my watermark update? And then we're going to click on this um, the import. So we want to import the two parameters, the last modified date and the table name. We have the last modified and the table name. So for the table name, this is going to be the name of our table. So I can just go back and copy. Uh, let me come back to this point and I want to copy this link out and I can add it then. I can just paste straight away. It doesn't matter anyway. So for the value for the last modified date now, I'm going to quickly come here and come to the source and I'm going to copy this part. So we need the this part, so I'm going to copy everything, excluding the double quotes. So copy that, Control C, and click OK. Come back to this point and click on Add Dynamic Content, and I can paste into this box and then click OK. So this is how we're going to configure our stored procedure. So now this is all we need to do. We can click on the home tab and then we can click on the validate to check if there's any error if there's no error we can go ahead and run the code again before we run the code or the pipeline don't forget we've truncated the data in this table so let me just check again to be sure i've got no data in order to avoid data duplication so no data so i'm going to come back and run the data pipeline interesting so the activity succeeded. So we can see the green check mark across each of the activities. So we can go on and check the data in the warehouse. So I'm going to come back here and then I can go on and select again. And this is going to give us 16. Okay. And then we can create a Power BI report on this. And we're going to go ahead and schedule the pipeline, load more data into the lake house file and see what happens. So that's beautiful. So I'm going to come to the reporting. Now, and before I go to the reporting anyway, let me quickly come to the model layout. And in the layout, I want to show you the table. So we have the sales data table 
and uh, we have all this column. Now, this J column is going to be treated as a column that can be summed because we use the integer data type. So I'm going to click on the J column and I'm going to scroll down in the properties. I want to go to the advanced menu and I'm going to instruct the J column not to be summed. So I can say this is going to be summarized by default. I'm going to say, hey, don't summarize the year column. I don't want it to be summarized. And then we can go on and create a Power BI report on top of that. So with the reporting tab selected, I can click on this mail report. And I'm going to manage the Power BI semantic model because I don't want the two tables. I just want one of the table. So I'm going to expand and I want to focus on the Lake House sales data table. So click on confirm. And then we have the Power BI that we can use for reporting. So I can just create an implicit measure. So we can see the year is now being treated as a column not to be summarized. So we can see the year 2015 to 2017. And then let's see this by the sales column. Okay, so we have this sales value. And it's going to be lovely if we can create a measure. So I'm going to click on or press Ctrl S to save. So I'm just going to call this one sales report and then click on save. So this is going to be saved into the workspace. And I can go back to the warehouse and then go back to the same model layout. And then I can right click and we should have new measure. So we just want to count total data so using count rows function and we want to sum the lake house sales data close the bracket press enter to commit so we've created a measure i can come back to this tab and then i can set for i can okay let me just enable the edits and then i want to set for the total data so this will give us the 60 rows once we turn into a card so you have 60. Now let's go ahead and schedule the pipeline. I'm going to come here and I can click on schedule and I'm going to click on this to turn it on. Let's do this every three minutes and we're going to start running by this time and let's terminate maybe by tomorrow but I'm going to cancel it tonight so let me just start by tomorrow and my time zone is fine so I can click on apply. So the pipeline has been scheduled. Now I can close the tab and come back to the source. Now we can ingest more data into this environment. So I'm going to come back, click on this ellipsis and upload the files. Let's just upload 2018 to 2024.csv and click on upload. So we have bunch of data in the lake house so this implements as soon as new data comes in to the environment here it will automatically be read as long as it contains the same format csv and so on and so forth into the warehouse so now we don't need to do anything special we just need to go back to this report i don't need to come here i don't need to even come here for now because it has been scheduled let's come here and wait for three minutes and see what happens Let's click on refresh and see what happens. Amazing. So we can see we have the 2018 to 2024. So this gave us a total of 928,494. And this gave us a total of 200 records. Now, don't forget, we have 20 records in each of the CSV file. So this is going to translate to 20 multiplied by 10. So this is how we can implement incremental data loading from fabric lake house to warehouse i hope you enjoyed this video if you do like comment share and follow me for more videos thank you for watching bye for now